Oh my gosh, okay, so we just finished a huge, huge climb in this hot weather, but for very good reason, and that's because we have the GoPro Hero 11 Black on us today, and it may look the same on the outside as the 10, and even the 9, but there's a lot of different stuff going on on the inside of this camera. But will that actually equal better video or a better action camera experience? We're gonna go and find out. I've got my bike. We've got one of the roughest trails in the area. We're gonna put it through its paces in basically the worst stress test for an action camera possible. And we're gonna compare it to other GoPro cameras and other leading action camera manufacturers on the market like Insta360. So by the end of this video, I can pretty much guarantee that you'll know whether or not this camera is worth your money. Let's go. Okay, so now I'm at the top top of the climb. I'm about to dive in and you'll notice there's a weird crop on this. It's an eight by seven ratio and that's what the sensor size is. So that's a huge, huge difference from a normal GoPro. Usually it's like a four by three, but uh, I'm gonna show you stock settings. This is right, you know, I turned the camera on. The only thing I did was turn it into 24 frames per second rather than 30, which it normally is. And keep an eye out for a little bit later in the video where I'm gonna show you my settings and how to set this thing up so it's Oof, beautiful. Okay, so this section of track that we've chosen to test on, it's not super long, but it is incredibly rough. So it's gonna be a great coming spot to uh, really test things out. Woo, rough already. We haven't even got to the rough bit. Down the slab, hello Hunter. Now this is rough. Whoa. Let's see what that looks like. And as usual, the stock factory settings for any action camera, including the 11 Black, looks and sounds kind of bad, but that's okay. Just you wait. We're about to change things up for the better. Okay, the very next test. Now this is a test for you actually, and a massive test for the Hero 11 Black. And that's because we are gonna put the 10 right next to the 11 with all of my preferred settings. And then we'll see if you can tell the difference. Now I've got a little audio uh, wind muffler thing on both of them and it's set to my preferred settings and I've color graded these clips. Hopefully it's a good angle, I can't actually tell. Ba -ba -ba. Nice and rough and rooty. I can feel the chest mount moving around a lot. Woo. Down we go. Whoa. Yeah, oh yeah, that chest mount was flying around. That would be a good test. It's also getting darker. It is not very light in these woods, so. Okay, could you tell which one was which? Well, I certainly hope so, and I really hope this one looks better than this one, because this is the 11, and I kind of misled you a little bit. This one here is actually the eight black. Whoops! Okay, this is what the 10 looks like next to the 11. 11's here, 10's there. I've got it into all my usual settings. But right after the short clip, I'm gonna dive into the crazy new features with this camera that could potentially really, really drastically change things for action camera videography. 10 versus 11 with basically the best Hero 10 settings. Woo! And we're also moving on down the trail from here on out too. Yeah. <sighs> Riding bikes is fun. So between the 10 and the 11, using all of the 10's best settings, so not really using any of the new stuff on the 11, they looked almost identical to me. Okay, so now this is where things are gonna get really, really interesting. We're gonna use everything this camera's got and put it up against my previous best settings on the Hero 10. This is gonna be the big, telltale sign of whether it might be worth it for you to get the 11 black over the 10 or any of the other ones. All right, so I just had to pull the battery for the first time and the last clip I just recorded, SD card error. So we'll see what happened there. It's just when I started using all these crazy new settings. Ba, 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 ba. There we go. Okay, so the two main things I'm noticing from this comparison are one, uh, difference in shutter speeds, and then two, 
that hyper view field of view. And if you throw a freeze frame on there, you can see that the 11 is using even faster shutter speeds, it's preferring faster shutter speeds than even the 10 did, and the 10 would really preferred faster shutter speeds. So you can see that in the motion blur on the sides, which can either be good or bad. But in this case, it probably means better image stabilization. And two, that hyper view field of view, it takes that entire eight by seven aspect ratio from the sensor and squeezes the top and bottom all the way down into a 16 by nine format. So you're actually getting that entire tall field of view mushed down into 16 by nine. So we're seeing a bit higher and a bit lower with the Hero 11, and I really, really like that. And now we are gonna compare it to the brand new Insta360 X3 on this next section, because they actually share a lot of similarities. So let's see how that goes. We have got the Insta360 X3 on one side and the 11 on the other side. And the X3 actually has, from what I know, an actual square sensor. And so they have very similar formats and very similar ways of, of capturing the footage. They have really nice wide field of view that I loved when I was testing the X3. So let's test the difference. Now, I've got this one set in 5.3K. I tried to set it back down into 4K24 with Hyperview, but you can't actually do that. That's one of the settings that are locked off. So. That's weird, but whatever, 5.3K versus 4K of the X3, let's do it. And again, I've got that little wind muffler thing on there, oh, which really helps with wind noise. Uh, uh. Woo! Such a fun, fast section. Wah! Toy. Hey, oh! Lots of bears and elk around right now. Cougars. Bears are trying to eat as many calories as they can before winter right now. I don't feel like being like any of those calories. If I call out sometimes, let them know I'm coming for better or for worse. <laughs> okay, that was really rough. Things got slower, but things got more rough. This area is so rooty. Whew. So this chest mount was flapping. And if they could stabilize that, I will be very impressed. <laughs> okay, so my biggest takeaways from that test, and I was honestly kind of surprised by it, was one, the X3 from Insta360 definitely prefers and leans towards slower shutter speeds, which isn't necessarily a bad thing as long as it can keep up with stabilization. And I was kind of surprised with the slower shutter speeds that it did. I didn't really see the stabilization bobble at all from the X3, nor with the with the GoPro 11. I did like the more neutral, realistic colors that I was getting out of the GoPro, and I had them both set at 5500 Kelvin for white balance, by the way. Uh, but I think the biggest surprise out of that test was the audio. In the past, Insta360 has struggled a bit with audio quality, but in this test, I, I personally actually preferred the X3 over the 11. The 11 just kind of sounded far away, a little bit distant, um, and the X3 sounded more natural, um, it had more highs, it had more lows. It sounded good. And it's worth noting that this is also a 360 camera as well. We were just choosing one lens out of a dual lens system. Okay, as it's getting darker and it's starting to frickin' rain, we're gonna push the hyper, hyper smooth? Hyper smooth. There's all these terms I can't keep track. We're gonna push the hyper smooth to the max. We've got a little ND filter here from Polar Pro. And this is the 11 on this side with the ND filter. Uh, which it's an ND16. And then we've got the 10 here without an ND. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run through a fast, rough piece of track, and then I'm gonna swap the ND filters over and see which Hypersmooth breaks up faster, Hypersmooth 4.0 or Hypersmooth 5.0. I think this is where I'm gonna start the test. Cause I gotta take these rough insides. Whoa. There we go. Inside, coming through here. A little gap here into this left-hander. Woo! Okay, that's where we're gonna stop. Here we go. Oh yeah. Woo! Well, that was a pretty extreme test. And keep in mind that the GoPro compensates for that ND filter, making it so much darker. But in reality, we went from like, you know, this brightness and it'd be like the same as turning it down to like this brightness and the camera having to compensate with higher ISO, lower shutter speeds, both of which 
generally make the image quality much, much worse and the stability much, much worse. But yeah, to my eye, the 11 did a little bit better of a job with stabilization and also there was a lot less noise and that, digi that digital high ISO kind of noise to it. So good job on the 11. Okay, as I push up for the last bit of this lap, we've got just the 11 on my chest. All the settings that I think are, should be the best. I'm gonna color grade it. I'm gonna look, make it look nice. But also with that whole 10-bit color thing, I'm gonna try and grade it HDR too. See if it's even possible. And if it is, I'm gonna post it on the Lone Ranger Instagram so you can check out the results there. And also later this week, we are gonna put out a full beginner's guide on this camera because there is a lot to cover. There's a lot of new things going on. So we're gonna cover all of that for you in a nice toity little video. So a couple more important thoughts now that I've used this camera for a little bit. Um, one, I was worried with adding all these new features and, and new sensor and all that kind of stuff that we'd start pushing that GP2 processor a little bit too hard, like what happened with the Hero 9. And when that happened, the rest of the camera really stopped functioning all that well. But I'm happy to say that with the 11, the GP2 processor, and all of, these new, all of this new functionality and the new big sensor, the menu system still worked great, the touch screen worked great, no complaints for any of that. I had that one SD card error, uh, but that was it. I haven't, I haven't had any issues since. Now, is this camera for you? Um, well, if you want a single lens, really high quality GoPro or action camera, yeah, absolutely. For me as a mountain biker specifically, I'm really appreciating Hyperview where you're just squeezing in just that much more from the top and from the bottom. I think it'll be really, really great for a chin mounted situation where you really need the tallest possible FOV um, to catch the bars and also the end of the trail at the same time. So what did you think about the performance? Were you surprised in a good way or bad way? Let me know down in the comments below. If you wanna pick one of these up, I have an affiliate link in the description. So if you buy one there, it's a little bit of a kickback to the channel. But yeah, otherwise we've got that full beginner's guide coming at the end of the week. So make sure you hit subscribe for that and many, many more videos coming down the pipe. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in a few days, everybody. Cheers.